Jeremy, explain for us the merits of this New York lawsuit. Well, it actually had merits. I mean, keep in mind that the court has already ruled, as you all heard on the summary judgment motion, saying that the evidence existed there at that point for enough facts, if you will, that there didn't need to be a ruling later on or a trial where a jury, or in this case, a judge, had that separate proceeding. So it, it's a, it's a, seems to be a strong case on its, fit, on its face, though there seems to be real issues. Uh, but at the same time, keep in mind, this is not a criminal proceeding. It's not proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It's preponderance of the evidence. It's very distinct and separate from what we've been hearing out of D.C., for example, in Georgia. And Jeremy, you just mentioned this is not a criminal proceeding, but Donald Trump does have a lot at stake in this trial. A absolutely. Jail is not an issue here, but really his livelihood, his ability to conduct his business and basically tearing down, you know, that wall behind who he really is. If, in fact, Letitia James and the attorney general's office also not just already established the one issue that has already been presented to the judge, but the issues in terms of insurance fraud and conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, the other outstanding matters. We're talking real dollars here, a quarter of a billion dollars, potentially. We're talking about severing his ability to deal with banks in New York for the foreseeable future. And not just him, keep in mind, this is his children as well. And Jeremy, I want to play part of what Donald Trump told reporters during a recess today. Let's take a listen. This rogue judge, a Trump hater, the only one that hates Trump more is his associate up there, his person that works with him. She's screaming into his ear on almost every time we ask a question. A disgrace. Jeremy, have you ever seen a scenario in which a defendant in a case, civil or criminal, attacks the judge as the trial is beginning from right outside the courtroom? Short answer is really no. And, and this is a desperate, desperate man. It's almost like he's a cornered raccoon and, uh, or, or some other animal that got into your garden. And he's got no other choice but to lash out as you get closer and closer. That's his defensive mechanism. It's not going to help him. And as we've noted many times, this is a bench trial, not a jury trial. So the judge is going to hear some of this, although the judge should be ignoring all of it. But this is going to be his own demise. And remember as well that the attorney general can call him as a witness, unlike in a criminal case that can't force you. But he may be testifying in this trial. And we, meaning the American public, are going to hear whether he's going to implode or be on that, on that stand in a, in a calm, reasoned manner. You know, and Jeremy, look, supporters of the former president might make the argument that this isn't that big of a deal. Could you make the argument that exaggerating or underreporting assets in, is widespread and could and you could bring similar allegations against many developers, especially in New York? Yeah, I mean, that, that's not a, a defense that has merit. And also to the extent or magnitude that is alleged here is quite different. I am sure there's fraud that exists everywhere. I think we'd be naive and ignorant to assert otherwise. But to this magnitude, to this amount, and these dollars, that's not fair. It probably isn't that much. We know the attorney general's office does these type of white collar investigations. But merely saying, you know, someone else did it, so therefore I can do it, that, that's not a defense. That's not a defense. You just happen to get caught. And, you know, I, it makes you wonder whether or not, you know, the former president rules the day he ran for president and subjected himself to this kind of, you know, oversight and review. But that's not a defense. That's not going to fly, especially before a judge. And Jeremy, put this in the context here of the civil trials that he's facing. Is this one perhaps the most existential threat to the former president? It's not even existential. It's, 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 it's real. It's, it's immediate uh, and very legitimate, for lack of a better term. Uh, the president is not, you know, the risk of losing a few million dollars in a defamation case. Uh, if this ultimately plays out, and, and no doubt there'll be appeals throughout the process when this case closes, this can be or spell ruin for him. Uh, you know, Trump Tower and that 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 gold uh, shimmering fakeness may be exposed if, if the, uh, the attorney general is successful. This can really be debilitating. And I'm saying that kindly. It could be much worse. Whether and, it is, we'll find out. And Jeremy, finally, do you see any scenario in which Donald Trump actually testifies at this trial? You know, you know, testifies in his own defense. You know, normally I would say never would I put a man like him with his inability to stay focused uh, on the stand. But as I noted before, in a civil proceeding, he may be called. So the question remains, do you want to take the wind out of the prosecution's sails and put yourself out there and get your evidence out in the best, cleanest way possible, not being on their case, but on your own? Uh, you know, it's a real question to be asked. But generally speaking, 
No. In the criminal trials, I can't imagine he's testifying. Jeremy Salan, thank you so much for joining us here on Meet the Press Now. Thank you.